If you're in the projector market or you're just a fan of the old projector and screen, that cinematic feel that it gives you, this is a video for you. This past weekend, I was up in New York City covering the 2022 Value Electronics Long Throw Projector Shootout. It was a really neat event and quite frankly, a great opportunity to see the best of the best side by side competing for what Robert Zone and his team at Value Electronics were calling the king of projectors. So once again, we found ourselves in New York City, right in Midtown Manhattan for another Value Electronics shootout event. This time, no TVs. This was all projectors. And it was a really, uh, I would say, unique opportunity to see the best of the best throwing it down side by side. You can see right here, we are back in the same room where the uh, 2022 TV shootout was held. This is a very long room, which allowed for four 120 inch screens placed side by side. And these are not just any old screens. They are Seymour screen excellence, radiant white with unity gain. That's one gain screens. It's neat to see Chris Seymour uh, represented at an event like this. So the screens were there, projectors were set up on racks. You can see in that shot there, there were a couple of small drawbacks to this particular space. One is you can see there's white ceilings and white walls. Not the best environment necessarily for a projector system, okay? You get a lot of reflection off a white surface that could damage what you're seeing on the screen, the quality of the image. Um, you know, every single projector there was dealing with the same circumstances, so it was applied evenly. If anything, the projectors that handle bright uh, material better were at an advantage, and the ones that rely more on their blacks were at more of a disadvantage. Uh, you know, frankly, as you'll see in the results, uh, that didn't matter a whole lot, uh, but that's just something that is worth noting. Also, a reference monitor wasn't present. Now, at the Value Electronics uh, flat panel shootouts, there's always a Hollywood grade reference monitor, just like what the colorists and post-production crews would use. Um, there's always one of those present, so you can judge that image to what you're seeing on the various TVs at the event. Now, nothing like that was present at this particular event, so judging was left up to some interpretation and personal preferences in terms of what the eyes were seeing displayed on the screens. I think it worked out well enough that the differences between the projectors, again, I, I'm saying this again, the differences and the, uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the various projectors were rather evident just in the side-by-side -side shootout. It's worth noting that these projectors were not professionally calibrated for this event which might seem a little unusual, but I kind of liked how that put a little twist into what was happening. Now, they were set up by professional calibrators who used meters to try and get the projectors into the best kind of calibrated state using factory settings. Uh, they also went through and did things like check sharpness, gamma. I think they said the gamma was generally set to 2.4. Um, and things along those lines. So they weren't exactly kind of like fresh from factory right to shoot out. Some tweaks were made, but they were not given a full calibration. I think that's really important to note because some of the deficiencies that we saw would have been corrected through a calibration. So we're, today, you know, in this video, we're just gonna try and stick to the things that likely wouldn't be affected by a calibration. And, you know, talk a little bit about which one of these projectors plays best in what kind of environment. Okay, so let's take a look at the contestants. And you can see there in the first category, it's a four to $7,000 category range, headlined by JVC's DLA NP5, and that comes in at seven grand. Next up, you have Sony's XW5000ES. That's a $6,000 projector. Epson's LS12000. That is a $5,000 projector. And coming in there at the least expensive is LG's AU810UP. Now, both Sony and JVC do have 
true 4K imagers. That is unlike the other two. With Epson, they use three LCD chips with dual 4K shift technology to achieve 4K. And then the uh, LG uses a DLP technology that's also paired with dual pixel shifting. So the question is, which one was the best? And boy, if you're looking for a cut and dry answer, you're not gonna find it. Well, actually I take that back. I will say this, the LG projector was by far the worst performing. It's black levels were elevated. So any kind of dark screen uh, shots just looked washed out. They lacked detail and also is notably a DLP projector, which means rainbow effect. If you're someone like me and you can see the rainbow effect, that is a non-starter right there. But honestly, when compared to the other three, the LG just pretty much came up in last place in every category. The only situation where I would recommend installing this projector would be in a very bright room and you're watching basically you know, 1080p TV content, including things like sports and, and stuff along those lines. But otherwise, if you're looking to spend $4,000, you can do a lot better out there on the market, including there is a ton of JVC and X7 projectors going up on the used market constantly, and they sell right in the four to $4,800 range. So you can go out for four grand and you can buy a seriously good projector on the used market, probably use it for years without having to change out the bulb. And then when you do need to change out the bulb, you pop in another four to 500 bucks and you're good to go for a lot longer. The next level up is Epson and they have a ton to offer. It gives a more of a JVC-like image in that they handle dark scenes well. The, uh, the Epson LS12000 handled SDR material really well. You can see in the scores in a minute, it was not that bad. Now it's not quite up to the same level out of the box as the, uh, the Sony and JVC in this particular category. But uh, you know, frankly, if you're looking to buy something brand new and this fits into your budget and you very well might see this on sale later uh, in the holiday season or early next year, snatch it up. I think you're gonna be really happy. I did get an opportunity to see that particular Epson in action at Cedia earlier this year and that was in a darkened room. That particular projector was calibrated and aside from the motion smoothing that they had engaged, which I would recommend not engaging, on a projector, um, it looked really good. I mean, in that truly darkened room, that projector really shines. So don't shy away from the Epson, particularly if your budget, you know, is calling you in that particular direction. Okay, so that leaves us with the Sony and the JVC. And this is really a tale of light and dark, where the Sony just really performs very well with bright material and the JVC and it's blacks. I mean, it's just no contest when it comes to the Sony. The Sony's blacks just look gray. It's black floor is just elevated. I mean, there's just no way to get around it. JVC looks crazy good uh, with, with dark material. So if it were me, if I had a room with a lot of ambient light or if I was planning on putting it into uh, a media room that potentially could have ambient light and you're using a gray screen or something along those lines, I'd probably go with that Sony and save a thousand bucks. But if this is going into a darkened media room, uh, I think you should do yourself a favor and go with the JVC. One thing that I liked about uh, that particular JVC model and the other models that were present at the shootout is that they all use JVC's frame adapt uh, firmware. So that gives you auto settings that engage based on the content that is coming in. And it sets up the projector to perform well, whether you're watching 1080p uh, SDR content or 4K HDR that's mastered at uh, high nit levels and 4K HDR that's mastered down like at a thousand nits. It takes that information and makes adjustments on the fly. So you don't have to. Now the Sony, you have to grab the remote, you need to make some tweaks yourself. So if you're looking for kind of a set it and leave it 
type of projector, JVC is probably something you want to look at. Now, let's take a look at a couple of photos that I took during the first uh, tier shootout. And right here, you can see an image uh, that shows skin tones. And on the left, that screen, that is the JVC. And right there on the right, that's the Sony 5000. And I want you to look at the lady in the blue who's in the middle. And you can see quite a difference in terms of flesh tone. Here's another shot showing you the same exact thing. You can see the JVC, which is on the left there, and the Sony is on the right. Moving on to detail and sharpness, and here is where the JVC also really separated itself from the entire competition. I think this has to do with the fact that it's 65 millimeter lens. It's the same one that's found on the NZ7 and NZ8. But uh, you can see right here, this first one is a close-up of an American flag. This was on a demo clip that was paused. Remember, this photo was taken maybe 10 inches away from the screen. You're never going to be standing 10 inches away from your projector screen. If anything, you're going to be sitting 13, 14 feet away from your screen. But in this case, since we were picking these things apart, we got up close to really see what was happening. And there you can see JVC resolve that flag rather well. And then we go to the next image. That is coming from the Sony 5000. This was one case where these two things, uh, the, the black levels, the black floor, and sharpness of the image, both decidedly go to JVC. And that's something that you're really not going to be calibrating out if you brought one of these projectors home. So let's take a look at the overall scores. And you can see here um, on the top row, that's the JVC. Uh, down one row, the Sony 5000. Then you have LG. And on the very bottom there, we have the Epson LS 12000. But when it came to bright content and SDR and upscaling, Sony did really well. And you can look down below, there's high dynamic range. That's 4K. HDR material. Sony also really excelled at the 1000 nit tone mapping. Um, but when it came to black levels, JVC just knocked it out of the park. And, you know, that was uh, a decided difference between the two projectors, just as Sony's brightness factor was a difference between the two, two projectors. And over there on the far right hand side, down in the bottom corner, you can see the scores. Uh, Epson and LG. We're not that far apart, although I got to say, seeing those two projectors side by side, I think they were really far apart. Um, and then you have Sony and JVC. They are almost tied neck and neck, which is why it's easy to recommend both of these projectors. In this particular uh, segment, if it were me buying this uh, for my particular situation, which would be a darkened theater room, obviously I'm going JVC. My next option probably would be the Epson um, for that darkened room. And if I was sticking this into my media room upstairs, definitely I think I'd be going with the Sony. Okay, so let's move on to that mid-tier category. And I say mid-tier, these are crazy expensive pieces of equipment. You have the JVC DLA NZ7 that's coming in at 11 grand. For another thousand bucks, you're bumping up to the Sony XW6000ES. And then beyond that, you really have to tack on another $4,000 and you reach that upper tier JVC NZ8, that's 16 grand, okay? So this price category is no joke. This is a lot of money to be spending. And good news is, I think that the difference between these projectors is pretty cut and dry. So let's get into it. The results pretty much tracked with what we saw early on. And this was really true of the next category up. The Sony, really good at bright images. It had a nice crisp image. And the JVC, particularly the NZ8, just dominated on blacks. The NZ8 was better than the NZ7 at blacks. The NZ8 also held over the NZ7 the ability to have a brighter image. So in really dark scenes, there was just 
a little bit more detail evident that you weren't seeing on the NZ7. It just, to my eye, it makes a difference. Is that a $5,000 difference? It may not be. I mean, $5,000 is a lot to spend extra on a projector. So if your budget is calling you down to that $10,000, $11,000 range, NZ7 is a great choice. But I think this comes down to the environment that the projector is going in. So for me, bottom line, NZ8 was the winner of this category. That's the one I would go for over the other two. Better black levels, its brightness is bumped up. It just resolves so much more detail. I mean, we've watched some of the uh, infamous Game of Thrones, the infamous episode that just upset so many people because they couldn't see it on their TVs. Um, it just resolved so much detail in those images, those really, really dark images. We went through some scenes and paused uh, universally so we could see side by side how these projectors were resolving shadow detail. And what you were seeing on the NZ8, and to its credit, the NZ7, much better than what the Sony was able to do. Now, the Sony, however, is a lot brighter. It's a lot punchier, uh, both with SDR and 4K HDR materials. So, you know, Really, if that's something that plays into your eye, and if this projector is going to go into an environment where it's not totally light controlled, Sony's gonna do really well. Then you come down to the NZ7 versus the NZ8. You know, the NZ8 gives you more brightness, and that was evident. Um, it also just seemed to have a little bit more oomph in the black levels. You know, to me, that was evident. I think the NZ8 is a better performer than the NZ7. It also costs $5,000 more. So if you're looking to get close to the NZ8 performance and you have a darkened home theater room, NZ7 makes a great choice. But in this category, if you have the budget, if your budget goes up to 16 grand, I think the NZ8 is the no doubt winner. That's the one that I would go with. And that brings us up to the big boys. This is where I think JVC probably had a decided advantage. Not only were black levels in the JVC NZ9, which is a projector that retails for $26,000. Um, the black levels were just so much better than the Sony uh, 7000 ES, which retails for $28,000, so $2,000 more. Um, really when it comes down to performance. And yes, the Sony, once again, had a little bit more of that brightness edge, but you can see right here in this image. Now, remember, this is an image that I took with a camera. It's not representative exactly of what my eyes were seeing, but you can see the difference right here in black level and black level detail, this shot from the Game of Thrones. And, you know, that's really something that you're not calibrating out of the system. That said, both of these projectors are serious gear. They are amazing. And some of the bright scenes that the Sony was showing, there was one in particular of a snowboarder coming down a mountain. They were just insane. So, I mean, you're really splitting hairs when you get to this level. Also, keep in mind, if you're spending 26 to 28K on a projector, you're going to be getting a professional calibration, which is really gonna bring performance almost neck and neck, almost. I do give the nod still in that situation to the JVC NZ9. It is a phenomenal projector. Now, one thing I did want to note is that Sony was running something called the Reality Creation Engine on all of its projectors. That comes engaged from the factory, and it was left on for the shootout. And it, it's, it creates a really neat effect, and I was divided on whether I liked it or I didn't. And ultimately, it introduces things to an image that just aren't there. It sharpens lines. It darkens lines. It really just draws out detail though. There were a couple scenes that we saw that looked amazing. Almost too amazing. I'm not sure. I'm really torn on it. You know, if you're looking 
for the ability to sharpen an image to that level, I think it's something that you should check out. Your eye might really like it, even though it is probably changing beyond what we call that creator's intent, director's intent. It's probably changing that to some degree that would be upsetting to purists, but uh, you know, something to consider, something to keep in mind. I think that you know, if you didn't know that was engaged and you walked into a room and you saw a Sony and a JVC, say, shooting side by side like we were seeing, you might actually say, wow, they were giving you a lot more detail with the Sony. So interesting food for thought. Okay, and I know you want to see these score sheets, but you can see right there, boy, Sony out of the box right there and the top it gets a 10 out of 10 for bright content. And you look down, JVC and Z9, 10 out of 10 for black content. Also, surprisingly, on uh, this level of projector, the Sony came in a little behind the JVC for color accuracy and skin tones, which was not what we saw in that mid-tier category. But when it comes to HDR black levels, again, JVC really, really hammers it out. And you can see the final score there, 9.5 to 9.1, obviously, we're talking in the nines for both projectors. Both of these projectors look ridiculously good. So what does this mean? First of all, we can see JVC was picked across the board, but you have to look at the judging numbers because they are really super close. Razor thin margins, particularly in that kind of entry level, we'll call it budget, even though it's not budget, but that entry level category where JVC eked out a victory over the Sony 5000 ES by 0.1 points. Uh, then you get down to the other projectors. These projectors are scoring in the nine and above category. That is insane. It basically means that these projectors look incredible. It really comes down to where you're going to be deploying it, in my opinion. Of course, if your eye just favors that punchy, bright image, you're looking at Sony. And if, you know, shadow detail and laying that foundation for great contrast is really important to you, you're going JVC. It's that simple. All right, folks, that's all I have for you today. If you'd like to read an article I wrote about this projector shootout with a lot more detail than we go through in this video, just click on the link in the description below. That'll take you over to AV Nirvana. You can read it and you can ask me questions right there in the discussion section. If I don't have an answer for you, I promise I will find you one. Aside from that, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Please hit like and subscribe. We have more for you coming soon.